This video is going to cover the Pythagorean Theorem, but I am going to assume that you at least have a basic understanding of what the Pythagorean Theorem is, so let me just go over a few things that you should already know quickly, and then we will work out some practice problems. The Pythagorean Theorem, as a quick review, it is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The letters a, b, and c come from a right triangle. That is what you need for the Pythagorean Theorem to work. It has to be a right triangle where you have a 90 degree angle in the corner. There will always be a box there to show you 90 degrees. There will not always be the number 90 written there, but there will always be a box. One thing you need to be aware of is that the values of A and B do not have to be in the positions that you see them in right now. You could also have B and A just like that. Sides A and B are interchangeable. But side C has a special name. It is called the hypotenuse. It is always the diagonal, but it is always opposite the 90 degree angle. So uh, these are the two things you need to know. The hypotenuse will always be the longest side on the right triangle, and it will always be opposite the right angle. So if you are taking notes right now and doing some practice problems with me, definitely write that down. The hypotenuse is the longest side, it is also opposite the right angle. So if let's say you were to have a triangle that was maybe drawn like this, it's not as obvious what the hypotenuse is because usually you see a picture that looks like this large triangle here where the hypotenuse is diagonal. But in a case like this, you would see a right angle sign right here in the corner, and that means this line down here is side C, the hypotenuse, because it is opposite the right angle sign. So remember that. Opposite the right angle, that is going to be your hypotenuse. So let's go ahead and do some practice problems, and let's see how you do with it. All right, so uh, here are two practice problems. Pause the video, see if you can work out those values, and then when you hit resume, you'll, uh, you'll hear the, the answers. All right, number 18. A and B could be 108 and 81. So that means you will have 108 squared plus 81 squared equals C squared. Square both of those numbers, and you get very large numbers. 11,000, 6,000. Add those together, you get 18,225. Take the square roots of both sides to get C alone. That is the opposite of squaring something. You have to take the square root in the Pythagorean theorem. And you get 135. That is the value of C. And notice, 135, that is longer than 108 and 81. The hypotenuse is always the longest side. Number 19, notice that side C is 50, and it doesn't tell you what B is. So that means when you set up the Pythagorean theorem, you have A as 40, and then on the other side of the equation, 50, that is the value of C. So in this case, when you square both uh, 40 and 50, in order to get B squared solved for, you are going to have to subtract 1,600 from both sides. So that leaves you with 900 as b squared. Square root that, you get 30. This is a very brief explanation of how to do these problems, so if you need a more thorough, in-depth explanation, look around on YouTube for a, uh, a more concrete example of uh, the Pythagorean Theorem, because again, I'm assuming you already have a brief familiarity with it. All right, so let's warm up with some other problems. Uh, the following slides were used as our review in class where we were playing a game. So uh, I'm just going to walk through those practice problems anyway and, and you know pause the video, work them out, and then hit resume so you can see the explanations and, and see how well you did. So uh, here's the first one. Pause the video, see if you can get it. Okay, uh, the first answer, number one, you are trying to look for side C. So that means A and B are uh, going to be plugged in right there to the Pythagorean Theorem. You have 10 squared and 24 squared. 10 squared becomes 100. 24 squared becomes 576. Add them together, 676. Take their square roots, and you get 26. B was the first answer. Number two, notice the 53 is across from the right angle. That means the 53 is side C. So when you plug into the Pythagorean Theorem, the 45 being A, that goes in first, and the 53 squared is on the other side of the equal sign. You are looking for b squared in this problem. So you get 2,025 and 53 squared, 2,809. Subtract them. b squared is going to equal 784. Take the square root. You get g. 
Next, here are two more problems. Pause the video, see how you do. All right, so the first thing you need to know about number three is that, again, the hypotenuse is the longest side. So basically, you need to plug in all four of these numbers, all four of these answer choices, into the Pythagorean theorem and see which side has a and b both being squared equaling c squared. Uh, when you do it correctly, it is going to be choice D, and here's why. 13 is A, 84 is B, 85 is C. When you plug 13, 84, and 85 into the Pythagorean theorem to check, here's what you get. 13 squared is 169. 84 squared, 7,056. 85 squared, 7,225. When you add 169 and 7,056, you get 7,225, meaning the two sides of the equation now equal each other, and those three numbers right here were three sides that could be the side lengths of a right triangle. All of the other answer choices, if you were to do this procedure, you would not have the same thing on both sides. Number four, draw a right triangle. Drawing a picture can really help. It tells you that the side length is four meters, so you can put a four right here, or you could also put a four on the bottom, because again, A and B, those sides are interchangeable. The hypotenuse is 8.5, so that would go right here. So that means we're looking for side B again. So uh, side C is 8.5 and A is 4, so here's what the formula would look like. 4 squared is 16, 8.5 squared is 72.25, subtract 16, B squared is going to be 56.25. Take the square root, you get F. Alright, so now for some problems where you are definitely going to want to draw a picture is going to make it a lot easier for you to understand. So uh, here are the problems again, pause the video, see how you do. All right, number five. It says how long is the diagonal of a 12 by 16 rectangular garden? Well, here's a rectangle, and the diagonal of a rectangle is a corner to corner drawing a diagonal line. That's what it looks like. It's asking you how long is that diagonal, and you will notice that we have now made a right triangle. So that means the diagonal is side C, opposite the right angle sign. So that means A and B are both uh, 16 and 12, square 12, 144, Square 16, 256. Add those together, you get 400. Take the square root, the answer is 20. Number six, a square is being divided into two equivalent triangles. So that would be, again, dropping a diagonal from corner to corner. It says the square is 20 by 20, so you can see the 20s right here. So that means, again, side C, opposite the right angle, is what we're looking for. So your 20s go into the Pythagorean theorem like that. You get 400s, add them together, 800, take the square root, it's about 28.3. All right, so now for some problems that are a little more like a standardized test. Not totally there yet, but kind of at least getting you the right idea. Uh, so again, pause the video, see if you can get each one of these questions before, uh, before you see the answer, and, and let's see how you do. All right, so here's the thing. It says a hiker goes six miles east. You need a starting point. It's good to draw something to represent your beginning point. East is going to the right, and it says six miles, so that's why the line says six over it. Then the hiker turns south, so that means the line would go down. But it doesn't tell you how far south, so that's why the question mark is there. It says if the hiker finishes 7.2 miles from the starting point, how far south did they go? Well, from the starting point, that line can be drawn there as side C, and that is 7.2 miles. So that means the right angle is right here, and side C is 7.2, so we are again looking for side B, and that's what the picture should look like. Uh, 6 will be A, 7.2 is C, 6 squared is 36, 7.2 squared is 51.84. Subtract your 36s, and you get B squared equals 15.84. Take the square root. You get about 3.9, which you can round up to 4. You could leave it as 3.9. Usually the problem will specify how you should round. So in this case, however you round it is perfectly fine. Here's another problem. All right, so the same idea. Uh, the pilot is flying south, so you need a starting point, And then it doesn't tell you how far south but it then tells you the pilot goes 600 miles west. 
and then if the pilot is landing 610 miles from the starting point, that would connect the end point here to the original starting point as, again, the hypotenuse C. So 610 is side C, and we are again looking for B. So here's your function, or here's your formula. 600 squared, got a big number. 610 squared, another big number. Subtract them. Take the square root of 12,100, you get 110 miles. All right, one more. Definitely think hard about this one because this is a good, good example of a uh, standardized test problem. All right, so the area of a square is 625 centimeters. The area of a square is calculated by doing base times height. If you are being told that the area is 625, but it's a square, then that means the base and the height had to be equal because a square has four sides that are all equal. So to get 625, you had to multiply the same number twice, meaning to figure out those side lengths, you would just take the square root of 625, which is 25. So that means 25 had to be the base and the height of the square. Uh, so we're trying to find the diagonal. So that would be, again, right there, corner to corner. Your right angle is where you see it. So that means side C is what we're looking for. A and B are 25s. Those become 625s. Add them together, 1250. Take the square root. Notice how it says round to the nearest tenth. So rounding correctly, you would get an answer of 35.4. And it's very important to always read carefully so that you round correctly. Uh, the end of course exam will always tell you how they want you to round, and if you do not round correctly, well then you are likely going to get the wrong answer. All right, so with that being said, uh, this video is going to end with these problems because the rest of the problems we have not yet done in class together, so I would rather you see them in class for the first time. So I hope this is helpful for those of you getting an understanding of the Pythagorean Theorem. Uh, please come to class with any questions, and I will talk to you guys later.